Okay, so welcome to this video on uh, the properties of variance. Uh, so this is the setup. Uh, we have an abstract probability space, and I'm gradually drawing abstract probability spaces smaller and smaller. Uh, the sample space uh, with a set, of uh, a set of events and a probability measure, uh, and then we have a random variable x, uh, which is mapping this onto a, uh, it maps every single outcome in here onto a real number, and then this uh, structure here is going to inherit the probability space structure of uh, this abstract probability space over here. Okay, uh, so we could call these omega prime, uh, curly f prime, and p prime. Okay, uh, so uh, now uh, we defined the variance uh, in the previous in a, a few videos ago. We defined the variance of a random variable to be the expected value of uh, of what did we define it to be. We defined it to be the expected value of x minus e of x all of that squared, and then take the expected value of that. So basically what we did is we said, well firstly, define a new random variable, uh, subtract e of x, so basically take every real number in here and subtract off e of x. And that makes this, and that makes a new random variable, that makes x minus e of x. And then what we did is we said square this, and you get a new random variable, which is uh, the random variable x minus e of x, uh, squared, and basically what I want to know is what is the expected value of that new random variable. Okay, and that, uh, the expected value of this random variable is what we're defining to be equal to the variance. Okay, uh, so now let's do some basic properties of variance. Let's calculate what is the variance of, let's say, a random variable x plus a constant c. Okay, so the random, so basically, this is the setup. We have our random variable here, which is mapping every outcome in this abstract probability space onto a real number. Now, I'm defining a new random variable, which is going to be x plus c, which is basically just this random variable, but uh, to every, basically, you have an outcome here, which is being mapped onto x of s. I want you to add c to every single outcome here. Uh, so this will go to x of s plus c, and any other one will go to, what uh, you know, x of s prime plus c. Uh, so basically, that is a new random variable. It will inherit the probability structure of this one, uh, etc. And I want to know what is the variance of this. Well, just plug it into the formula. It's the expected value of now we have x plus c minus the expected value of x plus c, all of that squared, and then take the expected value of that. But we know that the expected value of x plus c is, so what's the expected value of this random variable x plus c? We know by linearity that this is the expected value of x plus the expected value of c. But if you have a probability, if you have a random variable which is just a constant, i.e. Uh, a random variable, so we could call this the random variable c, which is just going to ascribe every outcome to the real number c. So you're going to map every single outcome on here onto the uh, real number c. Uh, well, the expected value, uh, we know how to compute the expected value. You, you sum over every possible uh, value the uh, random variable can take on. In this case, there's only one, which is c, and you times it by the probability that it's going to equal c. Now, the whole space is mapped onto c, therefore the probability that it's equal to c is 1. So we get that the expected value of c is therefore just c. So we get that this is the expected value of x plus c. So just stick that into this formula, and oh, bravo! This is the expected value of x plus c minus the expected value of x minus c, because uh, this uh, will be the expected value of x plus c, and we've got minus in front of all of that, so we'll get minus c. Square that, and then take the expected value, but this, the c and the minus c here, are just going to cancel each other out, so we'll get the expected value of x minus the expected value of x, um, squared, all of that. Okay, uh, so um, basically what we get is that the variance of a random variable x uh, plus c is still the same as the variance of the random variable x. And that makes sense, because if you think about this trying to measure uh, the spread of the um, the spread of the probability distribution over here. If you just shift the probability distribution by c, uh, then that's not going to change the variance. It's going to change the mean. Clearly, it changes the expected value here, but it's not going to change the variance. Uh, so that is a nice property, that the variance 
of a random variable plus a constant is equal to the variance of that random variable. Okay, now another, another property that we want to find. We want to find what is the variance of, let's say, alpha times x, where alpha is a real number. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my random variable x, and to every real number over here, I'm going to multiply it by a constant alpha, and I'll get a new, pro uh, a new random variable, which I'm going to call alpha times x. Okay, uh, so uh, the variance of this, just plugging it into the formula, is the expected value of alpha x uh, minus uh, the expected value of alpha x, all of that squared, and then take the expected value of that. Okay, uh, well the expected value of alpha x is just equal to, we'll just have a recap of this in case you've forgotten from linearity, uh, the expected value of alpha x, uh, so basically what we're now doing is we are uh, mapping, uh, well we're mapping every, we're mapping, uh, this random variable x is going to ascribe to every outcome in this abstract probability space, it's going to ascribe a real number. We are now saying multiply all those real numbers by alpha, but don't change the probability distribution that was originally on here, obviously. So all you're doing effectively is relabeling all the elements of this distribution. The way you're relabeling them is you're multiplying them by alpha. Okay, so it's going to be equal to the sum over every possible value that alpha x can take on. But that's just alpha times every possible value that x could take on. So if we sum over all possible values of x and multiply them by alpha, uh, that's going to be equal to the same thing. And the probability that it's going to equal that specific value is going to be uh, the probability that the big x was equal to little x. Uh, now all we do is pull out the alpha because uh, this is a finite sum or I count to be infinite sum. Uh, so we can certainly do that. Uh, the sum over x of the probability of x is equal to x. Uh, and this is just the expected value of x, so it becomes alpha, the expected value of x. Uh, so now let's do that. Uh, let's apply that in here, and we get that the variance of alpha of x is equal to the expected value of alpha x minus alpha expected value of x, and all of that squared. Now what we can do is factor out the alpha and um, factor it out of the square as well and we'll get that this is the expected value of alpha squared x minus the expected value of x uh, squared. Now what we can do is factor the alpha al alpha squared out of this expected value uh, by linearity uh, of, the ex uh, of the expected value function and we get that this is the alpha squared times the expected value of x minus um, e of x squared. So this is the variance of x, so we get that this is equal to alpha squared times the variance of x. And that is another very important property of the variance, that the variance of alpha times a random variable x is alpha squared times the variance of the random variable x. Okay, so box that one too. And then there is a final really important property of the real numbers, which we are not going to prove, uh, sorry, a uh, final really important property of uh, the variance. Um, and uh, we're not going to prove this one, which is all very disappointing. Uh, we will prove it later on. Uh, but for now, we need it because we're going to need it uh, when we uh, work out the variance of the binomial distribution. Okay, uh, so um, the, the final property is that the variance of x plus y is equal to the variance of x plus the variance of y, providing and providing uh, x and y are independent. Are independent random variables. Okay. And we will use this fact to find the variance of the uh, binomial and Poisson distributions.